Hello friends of projectleader.com. My name is Chris Sterling and I'm a senior consultant with Cutter Consortium. Uh, much of what I do with Cutter is uh, around something we call software debt, uh, also known as technical debt. And within software debt, I actually uh, recently wrote a book called Managing Software Debt that explains uh, multiple areas that you could have debt in with your software projects and your implementation projects uh, that each can be managed on their own in different ways. And those five areas are technical debt. This is more about the code and the quality of the code and how easily it is maintained over time. We also have quality debt and that tends to be the break-fix mentality where we implement features furiously and then over time we get to QA at some point and then we try to uh, we try to build the quality in at the end. Uh, this causes a lot of problems and stability. As for the next one is configuration management debt. Configuration management debt tends to have to do with releasing software into production and if releasing is difficult, maybe you have a stabilization period or some code complete date or code freeze date at which time you hope that you can integrate all the pieces together and get it out into a releasable product without any problems and even once you go to production you feel uncomfortable like maybe something might go wrong. Uh, that's release or configuration management debt. Uh, another one is design debt and design debt has to do with the modularity of your application in order to change with times as business needs change uh, being able to take out pieces and put in new pieces or take out parts of the code and restructure it to meet new business challenges. And then the last one is platform experience debt and this is how your people within the organization are aligned to your actual customers. In many organizations there may be layers of components and teams that you work through in order to get a feature out to your customers. What we try to do with uh, platform experience debt and trying to remove it or at least reduce it is to get teams more focused on vertical slices of functionality throughout your architecture with ultimate goal of delivery to the customer within one team. Uh, this comes with some challenges as do all of the different types of software debt. Uh, we actually use a lot of tools in these different areas to help uh, projects move uh, more smoothly and to help teams identify the software debt as it emerges. Uh, for technical debt, for instance, there's a great tool I highly recommend called Sonar. You can go to sonarsource.org, find that tool, and what it does is creates a quality dashboard that shows you metrics that you can trend over time and see if you're managing your technical debt effectively. Things like uh, cyclomatic complexity and duplication of code are managed in this tool. Also code coverage in terms of automated testing tools. Uh, for quality debt, one of the things I look at is I look at maybe your issue tracking system or bug tracking system and see if we're able to, to manage our uh, defects in a more effective manner over time. In fact, I call it something like bugs escaping an iteration, maybe every two weeks, you see how many uh, defects are escaping the implementation that is going on over those two weeks, two week periods. And then also for a release, which may be uh, a month or multiple months, uh, we find out how many changes we have to make after we do the release. Over time, if we trend that and we look at uh, ways to uh, better build integrity in as we go rather than at the end, uh, we might find that those defects go down and count and we have a better defect containment. And then we have configuration management debt and this is really the amount of time that it takes for you to release your software once you feel it is complete. And this is something that you have to work at. In fact, I use a tool or at least an initiative to get towards two scripts. One script is deploy, the other one's rollback. And we try to practice those every single day. So one script is push button release with deploy, run your tests, and then also run the script rollback and then run your tests again to make sure that uh, those things that were behaving as before are still behaving that way even once you roll back. This builds a lot more confidence in production deployments and allows you to go forward with a, a release, maybe even early, and then be able to roll it back if you feel, so, feel the need based upon problems. 
uh, design debt. This is something that can actually be used with sonar as well. Sonar has an architectural uh, component and plug-in for it that allows you to look at the tangle index of your packages and, and across your modules and see if there's any kind of uh, uh, problems in terms of how things are associated to each other and if that would cause you pain later if you were to try to change them. And then lastly, platform experience debt. Uh, there's a great book called uh, Scaling Lean and Agile Development by Boss Vode and Craig Larman. <coughs> Highly recommend chapter seven in there called Feature Teams. Uh, so moving towards a feature team model it, we found has helped tremendously in reducing the amount of software debt created because of our misalignment or, or uh, communication gaps in, and challenges as we try to move product software from requirements all the way to delivery and feedback with the customer. Anyways, that's a, a little high-level topic of software debt, and for those people who are project managers, I highly recommend um, introducing your teams to these concepts and maybe looking for ways to create a strategy with them to manage your software debt more effectively. Uh, also, you can read my book, Managing Software Debt. Uh, appreciate any feedback as well. Thank you.